privilege to welcome you to worship at First Presbyterian Church in Galveston. Although we cannot be together physically, we know that we are together in love and spirit, and we know that God is with us in this place. Come together, let us worship God. We hear the voice of one who calls to us to come and find rest. We come, burdened with much, but will heed the voice of Jesus. We have much to learn from him, and he will give us all that we need. May we be ready to receive the yoke of Christ and empowered to live in it. Amen. God loves us so much that he sent his son into our world to assume our sins, to die for us, and to rise so that we can live with him blameless and sinless in all eternity. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. to serve him. 
Let us remember to serve God by supporting his work at First Presbyterian Church. Please remember to send in your tithes and offerings. If you would rather have if you would rather contribute by bank transfer, please contact the church for more instructions. Our Old Testament reading today is Psalm 45, verses 10 through 17. This psalm includes instructions for a wedding. There has been much speculation about which Old Testament king this was written for and which bride. However, Christians see the bridegroom as Christ, the king, and the bride as the church, a community of Christ's followers. Listen as I read instructions for us, the bride. Hear, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house, and the king will desire your beauty, since he is your lord, bow to him. The people of Tyre will see your favor with gifts, the richest of the people with all kinds of wealth. The princess is decked in her chamber with gold woven robes. In many colored robes, she is led to the king. Behind her, the virgins, her companions, follow. With joy and gladness, they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. In the place of ancestors, you, O king, shall have sons. You will make them princes in all the earth. I will cause your name to be celebrated in all generations. Therefore, the peoples will praise you forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join with me now in prayer. O God who comes to us, may we feel your Holy Spirit's presence in our hearts. That we will hear your word that has been inspired by the Holy Spirit to be written, that we hear it anew this day. And when we hear your word, may the Spirit claim us to go forward and live it. In Jesus' name, the Word made flesh, we pray. Amen. Turning to the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 11, I'm going to read various verses, starting with 16 through 19 and 25 through 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. That time Jesus said, I thank you, Father. Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you that are weary, and are carrying heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Lord bless the reading of this word. I remember when I was growing up, that my friends would usually come over to my house 
we had a nice big yard to play in, and we would just have fun playing games or just sit and talk. And we would have so much fun. And truth is that most of the time, when it was that where it was starting to get dark or time for dinner, time to come in. Oh, but five more minutes, please. We really enjoyed it. But there were certain occasions at times where it wasn't always fun. And it was in those times, it was usually because we could not agree on the games we wanted to play or what we wanted to do. I want to play tag. I want to play kick the can. I want to play hide and seek. I want to... And we just didn't always know. Now, sometimes, just for the sake of peace, we would play something just so that we could all be together, but... It's hard to have your heart into it if you just don't want to play it. But other times we just couldn't agree. We couldn't come to that accord. And so we left disappointed. Until another day when it came and we were able to get together and have fun again. Now wouldn't it be nice if all disagreements could end with everyone getting along? Even if we have those moments, we can't always agree. We come back together as if it never happened or we're able to address the problems. But sadly, we do live in a world where disagreements can be divisive and causing friendships to end or never even form. They can even cause us to question whether what is happening with that disagreement is even worth knowing anything more about it. And that is especially true with religion. And that is the crux of what I believe Jesus is trying to deal with in this passage. What is true? What is to be believed? Can there be unity? when it doesn't seem to be that way. The religious leaders in Jesus' time did not like John or Jesus. John was out there by the River Jordan calling for repentance for everyone. And yet the religious leaders were saying, we don't have to repent because we are the descendants of Abraham. We are God's chosen. There is no need for us to repent. Jesus offered grace and hope for those who were outcasts, the tax collectors and sinners, which caused these same leaders to say, foul, these outcasts do not deserve the law. They don't follow it. They don't deserve the grace. They don't deserve mercy. And yet during this time, the common people were looking for hope beyond the oppression and all that were weighing them down. The problem is that the focus was on how God's message was being brought to them. And people divided into camps. We like John because he's fire and brimstone and offers God's true word. No, it's got to be Jesus. He offers this hope and grace and, and really there's no fire and brimstone. He's got the true word. And so the disagreements divide everybody into camps. And even 2,000 years later, we still see it happening in the churches and in our homes and in our communities as we debate who is right and who is wrong. The focus, however, should be on the fact that God comes to us. Commentator Dale Allison states, 
we may be tempted to suppose that God is at work primarily or even exclusively in those who look like or sound like us. In the present text, however, God is at work in both John and Jesus. The circumstances reflect the largesse of God who meets human diversity with divine diversity. That is because people are different. Effectively communicating with them requires more than one approach. And as John and Jesus show us, there is more than one means to the great end that is God. God meets us where we are with the people we need. Many people find comfort in Jesus saying, Come to me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It is a very comforting scripture. But something to keep in mind, though. Jesus never said there would not be a yoke or burden. What he offers is a different take on the law. And that is the law means love. There's a wonderful story that uh, William Barclay shares in his commentary where it's about a man who was traveling and came across a small boy who was carrying an even smaller boy and that boy was lame. Of course, trying to make conversation, the man looked at the larger of the two boys and says, that's a heavy burden that you're carrying there, isn't it, young man? And the boy looked at him and said, no, sir, it's not a burden. That's my brother. The boy acted out of love. So when we truly come to God, we will see God is love. We see that his commands are for our best interest. And when we take that on in our hearts, the burdens do not feel heavy. We feel joy and love. Now, does that mean we will always agree? No. But we will be able to see everyone through the eyes of love. We will want to be together and share in God's grace and love. And when that love fills our hearts so deeply, when the time comes that we must part, whether to go home or go to a different place, that love in our heart is going to make us yearn to say, oh, five minutes more, please. Doesn't that sound wonderful? That God can heal the divisions in our hearts that even though we may not agree, we still love each other to be together. But for that to happen, we need to come to God and bring whatever it is that's holding us back from loving to him so that love truly is in all our hearts. Come to God and find comfort. Amen.
has bid me gaze upon thee, and thy beauty fills my soul. For by thy transforming power, thou hast made me How great thy loving kindness, vaster, broader than the sea. Oh, how marvelous thy goodness lavished all on me. Yes, I rest in thee, beloved, knowing wealth of grace is thine. Know thy certainty of promise and have made it mine Jesus I am resting resting in the joy of what thou art I am finding out the greatness of thy loving heart <clears throat> simply trusting thee Lord Jesus us, I behold thee as thou art, and thy love so pure, so changeless, satisfies my heart, satisfies its deepest longing, meets supplies its every need, compassing me round with blessing, thine love thine eye upon me as I work and wait for thee resting neath thy smile Lord Jesus as dark shadows flee brightness of my father's glory sunshine of my father's face keep me ever trusting resting Fill me with thy grace. Jesus, I am resting, resting in the joy of what thou art. I am finding out the greatness of thy loving heart. As we prepare to partake in communion together, after we finish the prayers and the breaking of the bread, let us take the elements at the same time. I will hold up the bread, and then I will hold up the cup, and we will take it together, even though we're not together here. But it shows symbolically that we are united in Christ. But as we invite that we are invited to the table, hear the words, come to this sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Honoring the freedom bought for us that we may worship together. God is in this land. Come, because God has loved us and has given himself for us. So let this bread and this cup be a sign of God's grace to us and a pledge of our love to our Lord Jesus Christ. Receive the love of God and consecrate your life afresh to Christian obedience and service to discover and to do the will of God in humble faith. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the creator of the universe, the ruler of all nations, judge of all fl flesh. You have placed us, your people, in this land made rich with rivers, forests, mountains, and creatures great and small. Here you set before the founders and pioneers of this nation an opportunity beyond measure to build a realm of justice, peace, and freedom. Here you continue to call us your people, 
freed from the law and baptized into Christ Jesus to be a sign of your reign in all the world. For such a place, such a vision, and such a calling, we give you thanks. But above all, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who sends us into the world to declare the good news of your kingdom to every creature, justice to all peoples, good news to the poor, release for the prisoners, sight for the blind, and freedom for the oppressed. We pour ourselves out before you in praise and thanksgiving, a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. So pour out your spirit upon us and on these the gifts of the bread and the cup. Make Christ known to us in the breaking of this bread and the sharing of the cup. Renew our fellowship in him that we may be for the world. His body poured out for the world at this time in this nation. And at that great banquet in the fullness of your new creation where justice flows like rivers, righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, where none shall hunger or thirst, and neither shall we learn war anymore. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, our honor, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. And we join our voices in praying as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The night our Lord Jesus Christ was to be betrayed, he gathered with the disciples in the upper room. After giving thanks to God, he took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, giving thanks to God. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take, drink, this is my blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So my friends, every time we eat the bread and we drink the cup, we remember our Lord's saving death his resurrection, his interceding for us, and the promise that one day he will come and sit with us at the table and we will feast at him. All is ready, the gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ, given for you. blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, you are very great. You cause plants to grow, to bring forth food from the earth, wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine, and bread to strengthen us. With all your creatures, we look to you to give us our food in due season. When you open your hand, we are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, you renew the face of the earth. Therefore, we rejoice and we sing to you, O Lord, and we will do so as long as we shall live. Amen.
friend we had Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often burden and the yoke of God is love. And what is love, it never feels like a burden for that we're yoked. So as God commands us to love God and one another, may we feel it with all of our hearts. Go out this day doing so forevermore. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us today and forevermore. Amen.